What's going on everybody? My name is Alex Freeberg and today we're going to be going over the complete guide to creating a data analyst resume. There's about to be a ton of information that you're going to see, including templates and websites. Everything you see is going to have a link in the description. If you haven't already, be sure to check out my channel and if you like the content, be sure to subscribe. Let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to do is look at things that I think you should not do when you're creating your resume. So let's look at this template as an example. It has the experience over here, it has the education, and then way down here at the bottom, it has this skill section. I think the skill section is really important, so I really think it should be way higher on the list. But the main thing that I'm really just concerned about is this sticky note section over here. It just does not look good. So the next thing that I think you should avoid is putting your picture on your resume. In my mind, this can really only go two ways. First, you're very attractive. And personally, I'd be a little bit intimidated because that'd be yet another person in the office who is more attractive than me. So I'm hesitant to hire you. Or two, you're the next Quasimodo, and I shouldn't care about looks at all, but, you know, subconsciously. So in all seriousness, I just do not think this belongs on a resume. If I really care about what you look like, I'll look you up on social media, like LinkedIn or Facebook or something. But genuinely, when I'm looking at a resume, I'm just looking at your skills and your experience to see if I want to bring you in for an in-person interview. In that in-person interview, I will see what you look like. So it really does not matter at the resume stage. All right, so this next one is a QR code. I am not 100% sure on these. They seem to be a little bit trendy to me. What they are is a QR code that you create for your website. And when somebody goes onto your resume and scans it, it takes them to your website. I have never actually seen this in real life, but it seems to me like it's a little bit unnecessary. Although if you're applying to like Walmart or Amazon or something like that, it could be a little bit clever. But for the general population, I don't think that that's something that you should put on your resume. So now we're gonna be looking at some good resumes and templates. When I think of a good resume, I think of something that is sleek and clean and is easily readable, not something that has a lot of color and not a lot of things that are distracting on it that could take away from your resume or cause me to look elsewhere where I should be looking at your skills. I'm looking at a picture of you in the corner. It has a few sections that I think are very necessary. The first one is being the contact section where I can contact you in a few different ways. It has a summary section, which is kind of an elevator pitch for yourself and it tells where you are and where you wanna go. The next is the skills section, which lists all the relevant skills for the job that you're applying. And then we have the experience section, which lists previous jobs. And in those previous jobs, you wanna list achievements or the impact that you had in that position at that job. And then there's the education section. And after that, I really don't think any other sections besides that are necessary. So if we look at this template, which is one that I actually do like, if we scroll down to the bottom, it has this activity section where you can talk about your passions and activities and things that you like. So I really don't think that this section is relevant, but if you want to put it on there and you have something that's a big conversation piece or something that you're really proud of, by all means, put it on there. It's just not something that I would look at when I'm looking at a resume. Now let's look at some templates that I think are really good. So what I was looking for is a good contact section, which this has. And then down here, it has a really easily readable experience and education section. And I think this skill section is really good. I would actually take this skill section and put it right up here above this experience. Especially when you're first starting out, I highly recommend putting this skill section at the top. You want the hiring manager or recruiter to see that you have the relevant skills to the position instead of just looking right at your experience and seeing that you don't have any. So I think this is a really good template with just a little bit of tweaking. I would move this skill section up to the top and then I would get rid of this activity section at the bottom. Other than that, it is very well laid out and very easily readable, and it doesn't have anything that is unnecessary or distracting. So I think this template is really great for someone who wants to be a little bit more creative and showcase their skills in a different way. So everything about this template is really well laid out. And then in this skills section, it actually has these skill bars. And so the higher filled they are, the more experience you have at it, or the better you are at it. And if you put it a little lower, you can show that you're a beginner or an intermediate. This is a great way to show your level at each skill, and it still maintains a really clean design. And so overall, this template is really good. I like the way it's laid out. I like all the lines and the boxes that they have, kind of like this design over here. I just think it's very clean and very simple and elegant, while also looking very professional. So this is gonna be the very last template that we look at. And if I were to redo my resume today, I think this would be the template that I use. It already has everything set up how I would want it. So it has the objective section, has the skill section, the work experience, and then way at the bottom, the education. Now, 
I do not have a great background in my education. I have a bachelor's degree, but it isn't anything related to data analytics. If you have a master's or a PhD, definitely put that higher as that's a big selling point for you. But if you're someone like me who doesn't come from a background in data analytics, I might put that a little bit lower or even at the very bottom. So now let's look at that template that I liked. I actually input some of my information and what I wanna do is walk through this entire template and just give my thoughts on each section and see if I can give you any tips or any thoughts that would be beneficial to you. So let's start it off with this contact section. This is the simplest section that there is. You just wanna have your name bold and then you wanna give a few ways that they can contact you. So if they try to call you and they're not able to get a hold of you, they can always email you. And this is another place where you can put your LinkedIn or your other social media that you want them to see. Or if you want them to see your website, like a GitHub, you can always put that. You can include your address so that they know what city or state you live in. I might not put my exact address, but I might include the city and the state. So now let's look at objective. The objective section is really supposed to be just an elevator pitch. So if I got on an elevator with the CEO of the company that I really want to work for, what would I say? And so for this example, I would say I'm a mid-level data analyst with four years of experience. I've worked here, here, and here, and I'm pursuing my master's or PhD in this program. And here's how I wanna help you, or here's the skills that I have that would help you at your company. And so I imagine that type of scenario, and that's kind of what you wanna put in this section. The mistake that I made in this section was that I was extremely vague. I didn't talk about anything specifically. I just kind of talked about how I wanted to help you with your data and help utilize your data better. I didn't give any specifics that was actually useful or worth reading in this section. Now let's look at the skills section. The skills section is extremely important. You're basically telling the recruiter and the hiring manager exactly what skills you have that are relevant to the job, and this is probably what they'll look at first. So when you do it, you probably wanna put the most important or the most relevant skills first. So SQL, Python, Excel, things like that go at the top, where less relevant skills go at the bottom. I had someone reach out to me who was a software developer and on their data analyst resume, they actually included a lot of the skills that they had as a software developer. And it kind of confused me because they had things like C++, PHP, JavaScript. And when I was reading the resume, those things were the things that were first and jumped out most. And although those are probably the skills that that person is the best at, they don't really relate to the job. And so either put them at the back or don't include them at all because it could confuse the hiring manager. Another piece that you could add is a soft skills section. I personally do not recommend this. When I'm looking at a resume, I do not take soft skills into consideration at all. Because if you put you're a leader or you're really good at communication, how am I gonna know that or how is that measured? It's really objective. When I meet you in person, I'm gonna know what level of communication you have. So reading on your resume really does nothing for me. Reddit user, I sink, therefore I swim, comments on one of my posts and gave a little tip that I thought was really interesting. They put their skill and then right off to the side of it, they put a link to their website where they can demonstrate that skill. So for SQL or Python, right next to it, there's a link that links to their GitHub or whatever website that they created to showcase this ability. And I thought that was a really interesting tip, so I thought I would share that. So arguably the most important section is gonna be your work experience. This is gonna showcase the previous work that you've done, and it's also gonna tell them what you're gonna to bring to the table if they decide to hire you. So some of the key important things that you need to add is obviously your title, who you worked for and where you worked and for how long. They wanna see how long you worked there because if you're job hopping and every year you're getting a new job or every six months you're getting a new job, that may be a red flag for them. And so try to, if you can, try to work somewhere for at least a year. Uh, I understand that there are tough situations where you have a toxic work environment. Obviously, if that's the case, get out. But if you can manage, definitely try to work places longer than a year. In your bullets below, you wanna put something called action items, or at least that's what I'm calling it. You wanna show them how you impacted the company that you worked for. So for example, I created a Python application which does something and it saves my department 30 hours of manual work each week. That's really useful. That shows that you have Python abilities and it also shows that you can solve business problems. Another one is generating revenue. Any company that is out to make a profit is gonna like somebody who can generate revenue and bring in money. So if you're working with clients and selling them software or something like that, that is a wonderful place to highlight it right here. So if you have no experience at all, I don't recommend just leaving this blank. I would put something, so if you were an RA in college, I would at least put it down and try to tie or at least try to show some skills that you used in that job and how some of those things might be useful as an entry-level data analyst. If you're changing careers completely, definitely try to tie in the job that you've last had into the data analyst job. Almost every job works with data in some way, so there's definitely a way that you can tie that into the data analyst career.
And then there's your education. This one should be the easiest one to fill out because you're really just putting any degrees that you have in descending order. So the one that you got most recently, put that one first and then go backward. If you don't have a bachelor's degree and you only have a high school degree, definitely put that on there. But after you get in for maybe two or three years into your career, I would recommend taking that off because at that point you want your skills and you want your work experience to shine more than your degree. The very last thing that I wanna mention before I go is this website right here. When I was doing all my research for this, I found this website and it's absolutely fantastic. There is so much really, really good useful information on here. Let me scroll down and just highlight one thing that I thought was really interesting. So he gives some really good information on how you wanna present yourself as an entry level data analyst. There's also a section on what things you wanna include in your summary and what things you don't. I think that is really well written. There's another part right down here where it talks about how you want to format your experience. And this is something that I actually really, really loved. And I actually talked a little bit about it in this video. And so this right here is really good stuff and really hints at a lot of the things that I made mistakes at when I was first starting out. So again, I highly recommend you check out this article. I will leave the link in the description. Shout out to Volan Volkov for writing this article. He did a fantastic job. I would love to review your resume in a video. And so if you wanna be part of that, send your resume to my email address. I'm gonna leave that in the description and I will review that in a future video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. If you like this content or you got anything out of this video, be sure to smash the like, smash the subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.